Hello everyone and welcome back to the dork side. I'm the dork in the road and this is six things that you need to know before you buy a Honda Africa Twin. I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy, so please consider subscribing. I have owned my 2016 Honda Africa Twin for over a year now. I've taken it on long trips on the highway, moto camping trips, ridden on and off road a ton. I feel like I have a pretty good sense of the bike now, I've put a few thousand miles on it, and I wanted to kind of share my thoughts and feelings about what it's like to own an Africa Twin for those of you who might be shopping for or considering picking one up yourself. You can learn a lot about the bike from the spec sheet and the, and the website and even the videos you can watch here on YouTube. I have a whole playlist worth checking out if you're interested. The purpose of this video is to kind of give you an impression of what the experience of owning the Africa Twin over time is like and the little things that you pick up on over time that you might not notice or experience on a test ride. One pretty important caveat before I jump in is I own a 2016 Honda Africa Twin that is a first gen AT. There have been some changes to the newer models so just know my experience is based primarily on the 2016, the first gen, but most of what I say will be broadly applicable to all the Honda Africa Twins. So the first thing to know before you buy a Honda Africa Twin is the way this bike feels when it's moving. So it's a heavy bike that's not up for debate, right? It's 500 plus pounds, everyone knows that. And you notice the weight when you're moving around slowly, but when you get up and going, this bike does not feel heavy. It does not feel unwieldy. It doesn't feel tippy or cumbersome. People see the weight and they think it's like driving a barge around, and it really isn't. It feels nimble and agile on and off road when you're moving. That's because of this sort of ingenious, very carefully designed nature of the bike. It feels narrow, it feels lighter um, than it is, it feels easy to maneuver, I feel confident doing things on it that I do on my DRZ. There's a lot of similarities there off the road once the bike is moving, it feels really, really good. So that weight that you experience just kind of moving it around and at slow speeds is mitigated a lot by the really good design and just the way the bike feels when you're going faster. It's honestly a little scary because I, I get a lot of false confidence from that and forget how heavy the bike is and how much more severe the consequences will be if I do something dumb and push it too hard and crash or it falls on me. Which leads me to the second thing which is kind of the opposite of that and that is that the bike is kind of heavy and awkward to move around either when you're not sitting on it or when you're not moving under power to push and move around maneuver even in the driveway like I can't push it up my driveway I can I can barely push it up my driveway with the key off I have to turn it on and use the motor to get it even up the driveway so if you're like stopped at all in an awkward situation with uneven ground and you got to move it around back and forth. If you're bad at slow speed riding like me and you, you end up just pushing your bike around a lot, it's really kind of awkward and unwieldy. That is when you feel the weight. You don't feel it when you're riding, but you do feel it when you're pushing, maneuvering it around. I almost dropped it just the other day trying to turn around in a tight sort of gravelly area. You will feel that extra weight and top heaviness and once it starts to tip you really feel it a lot more than a lighter bike. It is 100% possible that that's just a me thing because I spend so much time worrying about dropping it at those slow speeds that it probably makes me more awkward when I actually move it around where if I just you know I don't know learn to ride at slow speeds and turn around in tighter spaces this fear would go away. So if you're a better rider than me this may not matter at all. Third thing to know about the Africa Twin is one of my least favorite things about this bike and that is the stock kickstand. The stock kickstand, I don't know why. Honda is exceptionally good at building motorcycles that are top to bottom awesome, but the stock kickstand on the Honda Africa Twin feels like it's made from Swiss cheese. The thing is flexible and bendy. It's a super common complaint that people have. Duck Fan just bought an Africa Twin. It was the first thing he replaced, even on his 2018. So that stock kickstand is freaking weird, bendy. I never felt confident standing on the peg and swinging my leg over on that stock kickstand, and I've since replaced it with the Camel ADV version. Another sort of similar call this one 3A is that windshield bracket. There's a bracket that the windshield mounts to and it's right in front of you, right? So a lot of people use that to mount obviously their cell phone or their GPS, but apparently there's a design flaw where if you put weight on that bracket and go over uneven terrain, which you know, you do on an adventure bike, it can snap the welds off down inside the fairing and it's a real pain in the ass to replace it. So Camel ADV also makes a brace for that and I just ended up buying it because I mounted my big Zumo GPS up there. Those two things suck, the kickstand and the this persistent issue with the, with the very not strong windshield bracket, but you can also mitigate those two issues by picking up these aftermarket parts because Camel ADV wisely saw those issues and created products to solve them. So I have both on my bike and I would recommend them both. Fourth thing to know before you buy a Honda Africa Twin, and this is not something I've ever said about a motorcycle. If you've seen any of my other love-hate videos, you know this to be true, but the stock seat 
is comfortable. It is the first motorcycle I've ever owned that I haven't entertained the thought of replacing with a seat concept seat. And I've put hours in at a time on this thing, on and off the road, up and down. I like the stock seat a lot. It's not super soft, which is good. It's firm enough that it you know, cradles your buttocks and supports them in a way that is comfortable for long periods of time. So really impressed with the stock seat. I like it a lot. That's not something I say about a lot of motorcycles. It's usually one of the first things I complain about personally. And it even works well for a heavier guy like me. The seat's also adjustable, which you don't see. There's two positions. There's a high and a low position. I honestly at first thought I was going to want the low position just to make it easier to get my feet down and move around. But since then, I've put it back in the high position because to me, sitting in the low seat position, it feels like you're sitting in the bike and the high position feels like you're sitting on the bike and I would much rather feel like I'm sitting on the bike. Fifth thing to know about the Africa Twin before you buy one is there are some weird quirks to the design. One of the most annoying ones, in my opinion, is the location of the battery. So on the left side of the bike, there's a toolbox. You have to take the toolbox off. It's got Allen key bolts. And then underneath there is the battery, but the battery is in sideways. And so it has to slide out and the positive cable is just barely long enough to even get it out where you can disconnect it. So other than like tires and oil changes, the battery I feel like is a thing you mess with the most on a bike and so it's really inconvenient to have it so difficult to get to. I understand that they did that to kind of center the weight on the bike, but you know what else is in the center of the bike? The freaking seat. Why couldn't you just put it under the seat like every other motorcycle? No idea. Another quirk is you can't turn the ABS on and off while you're moving. You have to stop, pull over every time, whatever on the highway, but when I ride, when I transition from pavement to gravel, it would be nice to be able to switch that on and off. I can do it with the traction control. Why can't I do it with the ABS? Super weird. And the other annoying thing is when you switch off your ABS and your traction control and then you get off the bike to take a picture or whatever, if you shut that key off and turn it back on, it doesn't remember what your settings were. So you gotta go through and reset all of those things every time, which doesn't sound like that big of a deal, except I forget every time. And so I get on, ride 50 feet, have to stop again, turn it off again. It's annoying that there's no option to have it just remember those things when I'm riding off road. I get that maybe it's a safety thing. They don't want people turning it off and forgetting and hitting back on the road and getting into accidents, but I'm not gonna forget that. The second I hit pavement, I want that stuff back on. So I turn it back on. It's really frustrating that it can't just remember or save it. This is a really common complaint about the Africa Twin. Speaking of weird quirks of the design, it's, and it's weird to say this about a Honda, but there are a few issues, particular issues about this first gen that you should know about. The spoke corrosion, apparently there's aluminum and steel coming together that causes corrosion. That's a pretty common issue. And the forks, they wear out quickly. There's a, some kind of quirky thing with the forks. So it's just two things you have to keep an eye on. And then recently the Africa Twin Adventure Sports had that tank issue. They did a recall. It's all cleared up. These are minor issues as it goes in terms of motorcycles. I mean, they're gonna, this bike is going to run. The engine's going to run rock solid for tens of thousands of miles. But just weird that it has those quirks and that those things cropped up on a Honda, which is normally not something you have to deal with. And then the sixth thing to know before you buy a Honda Africa Twin is there's nothing this bike can't do. And it does all of the things well impressively well. You wanna just crush highway miles? Dude, it's comfortable, it settles right down on the highway, it's got a big gas tank, it eats up the miles, no problem, feels stable and planted, you don't get blown around by big trucks, it's really easy to lean into the corners, fun to ride on the street, no problem. You wanna go explore the forest? This thing can handle your gravel roads, it can handle mud, it can handle hopping over logs, it can handle Anything you might come across on your long exploration overlanding rides, this bike is more capable than I will ever be as a rider, and that's a great thing to know because the limitation will always be me if I get stuck or get in a situation where I have to do something crazy. Most of the time, this bike, if you put your feet on the pegs and open the throttle and point it where you want to go, you're going to get there because it's just that capable of a motorcycle. It's got all the power you could ever need. It's got the hauling carrying capacity. I put, you know, 100 pounds of gear on it, no problem. Took it up, rode in the woods and a spirited ride to get to a secluded campsite. It can do all of that. It's a great motor camping bike, great long tripping bike, great BDR road tripping, touring bike. It's, it's great on the road, but isn't limited if you're like, I want to take that gravel road and see where it goes. You totally can. It's a great thing about it. The bike can handle tight technical terrain. Not with me on it as a rider. I'm not that good, but plenty of videos of people taking it on super technical stuff, jumping it over logs and all kinds of that stuff. It's got all the power you need. Very capable. I've said capable 400 times, but it's a very, very capable bike. Very confidence inspiring. I don't worry about the capability of the bike. I don't worry, can my Africa Twin get over, through, 
or around that thing. It's can I ride it good enough to get over through and around that thing. So my conclusion, the final conclusion, this is an insanely fun motorcycle and I'm super happy that I bought it. It was my dream bike. I said it when I picked it up and I have not regretted it one time since. It's a fantastic bike that does everything that I want it to do and everything that I bought it to do. It's rock solid, reliable, very fun to ride in any conditions, versatile as all hell, you can do everything, and it's damn good looking to boot. Before you go test ride one, piece of advice. I went to test ride this particular bike, and right as I swung my leg over, the dude said, prepare to fall in love. And 200 feet down the road, I knew he was exactly right. So do not go test ride an Africa Twin if you're not prepared to buy one, because you will fall in love just like I did. I guarantee it. If you want more information about my Africa Twin and my setup, check out the Africa Twin mods video that I made that's got a full list of all the stuff that's on my bike and how I've set it up. Uh, and if you want to see what it looks like in action, check out this recent moto camping video where I took it out, rode it, camped. It was awesome. If you learned something or got some useful information or this helped you along your journey towards buying an Africa Twin, maybe think about hitting that like button. That really helps me out a lot. But for now, and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for watching and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Thank you. Excellent!